sing unto the Lord. Amen. Let us make a joyful noise Amen. into the rock of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Yes. And make a joyful noise unto him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. Yes, He is. In His hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is His also. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God. Yes. And we are His people and the sheep of His hand today. Amen. Let us not harden our hearts. Amen. Amen. Let us have a selection by the praise choir. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I'm going to do it on my, my style here. Okay. Do we have an on time God? Yes, we well, do. Yeah. Do we have an on time God? Amen. Amen. Not on that yeah. trip now. Amen. Do we have an on time God? Yes, yes, we do. Yes. Yes. Then he's always on what? Time. On time. But are we the children of him? Well. Shouldn't we be one? On time. On time? All right, yeah. Huh? Amen. Huh? Amen. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yes. And his courts with praise. Praise. I'm going to see if we can do something a little different sometimes. Amen. I'm going to start it off with a part of the Bible. Praise team. Is that right? Amen. Just say it right now. We're going to open it up. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, 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 he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, 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 he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, well, Job said, You may not come when you want it, but he'll be there.
same verse. James 1, verses 2 through 8. And it reads, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Mm -hmm who gives to all liberally and without reproach hmm. and will be given to him. But let him act in faith mm -hmm. yeah. with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, mm -hmm. driven and tossed by the wind. Mm -hmm. But let not that man suppose that he will receive anything mm -hmm. from the Lord. His double-minded man, mm. unstable in all mm. his ways. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I read James, the first chapter, verses 2 through 8. Amen. Amen. From the New King James Version this morning. And for a text, I mean, a subject this morning, I just chose a simple topic from the text. Count it all joy. Amen. 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 Count it all joy. Amen. Have you ever felt like you lost your joy, lost your zeal, lost your get up and go? Do you ever wake up and think, I used to be happy? Hmm. Could it be that Satan or your circumstances have stolen your joy? My I know we stop walking around saying this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. But the truth be told, amen. We let things steal our joy because we don't count it all. Joy, amen. Amen. Now, Satan attacks us on many fronts. Amen. He attacks our joy by trying to make us live in a state of constant lack. Well, we have no job, no money, no food, no transportation, no friends, no nothing, amen. He also attacks our joy through family conflict a strap where there's no peace of love oh, in the oh, home, oh. amen. And family, he attacks our joy through physical, physical and emotional pain, whether it be uh, uh, sickness, whether it be abuse, whether it be amen, loneliness, amen. Or grief, amen. Mm -hmm. And so oh, trials, troubles, tribulations, to us all, amen. amen. From my house to your house, amen. amen. They can come from many sources and they come from many and many different forms. And it seems, saying that sometimes we as Christians feel that life should not be so hard, amen. At least not for us. After all, we are children of the one and only true God. But yet we find ourselves getting tired, frustrated, aggravated, some to the point uh, to the point where it seems that we're spiraling down deeper and deeper into a dark hole that we can't seem to pull ourselves up out of it. Well. Amen. 
Amen. The first assignment he gives us to carry it on joy is to delight in the reality of the trial. Again, trials are unavoidable. Difficulties will come to us. We don't have to go looking for them, amen? Right. Because as much as we would like, there is no avoiding problems. Amen. We can close off and put our head on the cover, amen. And we can try to just ignore. But trouble has a way of knocking on our door. As a matter of fact, sometimes they don't knock on the door. They just come on bust in the room, amen. Well, amen. Okay. amen. Amen. And so, if we want to know where we are headed today, let me clue you in. You are headed for trouble. And trouble is headed in your direction. The Bible says in Job 14 and 1, man that's born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And so just as sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, we're going to face some troubles and trials in our lifetime, amen, more than we want to, amen. Amen. Job, Job was a blameless and honor man who feared God and turned away from evil. Yet, after all the prayer that he did and all the upright living he did, he still took an all expense paid trip. I mean, just talking about Daniel now. He, he still took an all expense, all expense paid trip to the lion's den, amen. Well. But then Job, Job tells us to count it all joy. When, not if, say, we fall into diverse temptations. The word diverse says many, many kinds. It doesn't always be the same kind of temptation and troubles and trials. But yet he tells us to count it all joy. Amen. And so when we are going through all those painful, tearful, sleepless, heartbreaking, agonizing, life of ultimate and life destroying trial saints, we are commanded to count it all joy. It is said that we can go walk around and say, Whoa, it's me. Why me? No. Why this got to happen to me? Amen. But it says we are commanded to count it all joy. Amen. And so when you say camp, that means, you know, you can just walk around numbering the things yes. that you can be joy before, amen. Count your many blessings. Name them one by amen. one to see what the Lord has done, amen. 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 And James said, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever we face trials of many kinds. Many have to read this passage then James would have lost his senses and bumped his head. Because at the time of this writing, saints, he is writing to some beat up brothers and sisters. He's even writing to us today, amen. But some of us are beat up, amen. amen. Tore up for the flow of amen. amen. Well, mm -hmm. And so, but he still says, count it all joy. Don't worry. Be happy, amen. Saints, now we're not just to act joyful, but we will be genuinely joyful, amen. Now it's a matter of the will, not based on feelings, and, and it should be that conscious of determined commitment of every believer, amen, to, come, to count it all joy, no matter what you're going through, amen. Amen. And because God commands it, that means it's within our ability to count it all joy. Amen. Amen. And so we have genuine faith in Jesus Christ. James assures us even the worst of troubles can and should cause us to be thankful and to be rejoicing. Amen. Because the more we rejoice in our trials, the more we realize that our trials and our tribulations and sorrows are not liabilities, but they are privileges. They are ultimately beneficial.
crucial, not harmful, no matter how destructive and painful their experience of them might appear. And when we face trials with the attitude that James admonished us, we will discover that the greatest part of the joy is drawing closer to God, who is the source of all our joy. Saints, trials are not only uh, unavoidable, but they are also unpredictable. We seldom see trouble coming, but when we least expect it, sometimes it just smacks us in the face. That is just the reality of troubles and trials. But again, understand, saints, no matter what's going on in our lives, we're still commanded to rejoice and count it all joy. And so we should delight in the reality of, of, of trials uh, by not seeing them as punishment, a curse, a calamity, but something that we can still rejoice in. Just like Peter and John did in the, in the book of Acts in the fifth chapter. In, in, in verses 40, 40 and 41, we read these words. It says, when they had called the apostles and beaten them, commanding them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go, well, Peter and, and, and John, guess what? They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. See, they had learned to count it all joy. Amen. 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 And before moving on, one important thing to note is that James did not say that we as believers should be joyous for the trials. Instead, he said be joyous in the trials. Well. This is not joyful anticipation for trial. Instead, it's joy during the trial. And the joy is based on confidence in the outcome of the trial. It is the startling realization that trials represents the possibility of spiritual growth. Now, in contrast, most people are happy when they escape trials. But James is encouraging us to have pure joy in the face of our trials. Amen? Amen. That's why we, have, we can delight in the reality of them. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the second assignment that James gives us in order to count it all joy is to determine the reason for the trial. When we look at verse 3, he points out here that there are specific reasons for the things that we go through. Amen? Now, there are a lot of things we may never know or comprehend about a trial. But the one main thing that we can know is that the that it is for the testing of our faith mm -hmm. that it produces patience. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The word here for testing is it's a word that refers to a young bird that would try to test its wings. It needs to prove whether or not something is a real thing. Or like the case with a young bird, to try and see whether or not something's ready to perform the function for which it's made. So, so therefore, thanks again, trials and testing proves the genuineness of our faith. How do we know if we are a good pilot or a plumber or a cook or mechanic? or a singer or whatever, well, if we never practice any of our skills, amen? Mm -hmm. In the same way, how are we ever going to know whether our faith in God is genuine or capable of performing if it's never tested, amen? Mm -hmm. Now, why in school, we are given, we were given, uh, are given tests, amen? And the premise of a test had two uh, 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 meanings, amen, two purposes rather. At first, the purpose of the test was to test the measure of the strength of our knowledge. And also the purpose of the test was to test the weakness of our knowledge. Well, and so likewise, trials test either the fortitude mm -hmm. of our faith or the frailty of our faith. Mm -hmm. 
if text, if text for our faith will move mountains, or uh, whether mountains will move our faith. Amen. Amen. If text, whether we will lose our joy, or we will count it all joy when we're going through. Amen. Mm -hmm. We may think that our faith is strong, amen. But only trouble will reveal the true strength of our faith. Amen. You've heard me say that our faith, I mean, we, uh, it should be like a tea bag, amen. A tea bag only knows its strength, or produces strength, but when it gets in hot water, amen. Well. And see, our faith must not only stand the test of time, it must stand the test of trouble, trials, and tribulations. Mm -hmm. A ship built in, in dry dock is not true seaworthy until it hits gale force winds. Amen. Amen. You see, the Titanic uh, was thought to be unsinkable, but it did end up sinking in the icy waters of North Atlantic after hitting an iceberg. Amen. An armed force recruit going through between eight to 16 weeks of basic training is not really battle ready until that person has faced enemy fire or even undergone a, 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 a drilling task mass, amen? Mm -hmm. You see, enemy fire can either make us want to throw in a towel or take the towel and beat our enemies with it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We may not know the way of trials because they can happen at any place. We may not know the when of trials because they can happen at any time. But we can always know the why of trials. As James said, they come to test our patience or our endurance. Amen? And as we understand the why of trials that come in our life, we can rejoice that they are working for our good. That God is helping us to build spiritual muscles to endure under the weight of trials and tribulations. But counting all joy is not possible until one realizes that God is in control. And that he has a purpose for each circumstance that we face. Amen? Amen. Because everything we go through, remember when we went to the study of Job, it had to go through God. Amen. Amen. God allows it. Amen. He allows it for our good. Amen. He didn't allow us to for, for, for make us feel good. Amen. But he allows it for us to be better. Amen. And so, when we encounter pain, isn't it our instinct to recoil or retreat or to run away from it? But the scripture we read today offers a different perspective to us. It invites us to consider our trials, our sickness, our tribulations, our lack, as opportunities for growth, for maturity and completeness. It's a perspective that requires a shift in our mindset, a transformation in our understanding of what we are going through in our lives. Amen. Because God never promised us that every day that the sun will shine. Mm -hmm. He never promised us a life of ease. Amen. Yeah. He never promised us that we would never lack for anything. He promised us that no matter what, that he will be with us. Amen. 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 That he will never abandon us in our time or need. He will never turn his back on us. Amen. Amen. And so trials can be a powerful teacher. They can teach us about ourselves. They can teach us about others. And most importantly, teach us about God. Amen. That he's a friend, that he's closer than a brother. Amen. Trials can also reveal hidden strength, expose hidden weaknesses, and come and, and uncover hidden treasures of wisdom and understanding. It's a process that's often uncomfortable, sometimes excruciating, but always rewarding. We count it all joy 
Amen. And remember that God is an on time God. Amen. 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 We, don't just, we don't just sing about his on time God. Amen. We have to live it out and believe and try in times of testing that he's still an on time God. Amen. 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 And the third assignment that James gives us in order to count it all joy is to desire the proper results of the trial. We find that in verse 4. Perfection is God's proper results of trial. Because verse 4 it reads, but let patience have her perfect work, that we may be perfect. And the word perfect does not mean sinless. It means mature. It means to grow in our faith. For an example, an oak tree is the perfection of an acorn. Amen? Amen. And so when we are feeling discouraged, just take a look at a mighty oak and see what a nut can produce. Well. If it's planted in dirt, endure rain and sun for many years, my, my. before it grows into that strong oak tree. Amen. 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 So look at us sometimes. It's through our trials and our tribulations that we have grown. Now, we're not what we want to be. We're not what we need to be. But we thank God that we're still not what we used to be. Amen. 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 Let them grow. Glory has taken place. Amen. Glory now, I know I want some of you to be further along. Amen. In your faith and your growth. Amen. Because I still see you acting as children, walking as children. Talking as children, amen. Mm -hmm. But God said it's time for us to grow up well, and to well, grow up, amen. 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 And the way that we can grow up, amen, is to let, amen, let faith, let the test, amen, endure to the end, amen. Because God is in the Christian growing business. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Whatever comes into our life, what is good or bad or ugly. It is for the purpose of growing and maturing us in our faith. Amen. He doesn't want us to be bankers. Amen. He doesn't want us to be carnal-minded Christians forever. Amen. He wants us to turn our tests into testimonies well, and our messages into blessings. Mm. But we don't have to wait until that trial or that test mm -hmm. or that mess well, is over. Amen. To count it all joy. Because we know in the end, saints, we will win Amen. if we faint not. Amen. If we don't give up. If we don't give in to temptation. Amen. 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 If we don't fall back into those negative patterns that we that we supposed to lay aside. Amen. Amen. Not only do trials produce patience and perfections, but they also produce purity. Trial come. So that we may be entire, more than nothing. That's in verse 4 again. Now that really sums up the purpose of our trial. God wants to use adversities in our life to mold us, to cleanse us, amen. Amen. To bring the glory out of us, amen. amen. So we can bring glory and honor to his name, amen. amen. He's tired of us shaming his name mm. by the way we walk, mm. by the way we talk, amen. Mm. By the way we act, amen. Mm. Mm. So when we are surrounded by trials, tribulations, mm. and temptation, saints, hear me today. We must not worry about where they come from. We must not sit and bemoan our faith. Instead, we have to discipline our minds to regard and to see each of them as opportunities, amen, to draw closer to God, knowing that we become more complete, more mature, more like Christ, amen, if we don't try to interrupt the process. And we mm. can say, amen, we can interrupt the process, That's amen. Right. That's right. But as we mature, we can count it out joy. We can be like what is said about Jesus in Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. It said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He had patience yeah. about the cross. Yeah. He didn't like the shame, amen, but he sat down at 
at the right hand of the throne of God. And then it goes on to say, consider Jesus who endured such opposition from sinners. He endured. He had no sin. But he endured all the shame, all the humiliation, all the beating, all the scorning, all the picking on laughing at amen. He endured that. Even in front of his mother, in front of his friends, amen. Amen. He endured all that. And now he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Amen. amen. So true, he wants us not to grow weary and lose heart. He wants us to count it all joy. Because the end results of trials should be perfection, which again is producing joy, 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 mm -hmm. deep down in our soul. Amen. Amen. The last thing, the last assignment that James gives us in order to count it all joy, saints, is to draw on God's wisdom mm. for that trial. Verses 5 through 8. Amen. Amen. And this Amen. is necessary to let our joy turn trials into triumph. It's not coincidental that verse that verses five through eight follows verse four. Because the two cannot be separated. Because when we are having to wait to have patience, that's the time saying that we need to pray and pray and pray for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And for and wisdom for God's will to be done. And verse five tells us that the Lord will give us all the wisdom we ever need when we're waiting. But we have to pray and ask him for it. Amen? Amen. Because we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. And we need guidance in dealing with trouble. Amen? Therefore, we must ask God for wisdom in dealing with them. Mm -hmm. Especially dealing with people. Amen? Because well. we don't get the right wisdom. Amen? Get mm -hmm. God's wisdom. Amen? <laughs> we'll find ourselves with a put our religion, religion on the shelf. Uh, we'll amen. find ourselves with a curse somebody out. Amen? amen. We'll tell somebody what they can go and what they can do. Amen. 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 Therefore, you know we need some wisdom. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 We're going through some things. Amen. Amen. We have to ask God. We do this because God created us with a mind and a freedom of will. And therefore, we have to make the right choices in dealing with trouble and dealing with peace. Saints, we are not robots programmed by God. No, we are individuals that God gave us a mind to make willful choices whether we're going to serve him and be obedient to him or we're going to do our own thing. That's why God's wisdom is needed for us to make the right decision. Amen. Listen again. Our trial our tribulations, and what is in family, what is dealing with our finances, what is dealing with our health, can be painful. They can strip us of joy and happiness and hope if we let it, amen. amen. Often, it is, a, it, it is right at that time that we always seem to want to know why, 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 mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. this is happening. Mm -hmm. It's during those times that we want to say, where is God? Does God even care about me in the war? Does he know what I'm dealing with, amen? Where are you, God? And so we pray for relief that does not seem to come. We beg for a miracle or for just for everything to go away. We want a reason for why things are happening. We want to understand, amen. But the somebody says, you know, we'll understand it better sometimes by, by and by. And by. Uh -huh. Amen. All right. And so I feel like Gene yeah. addresses all our why questions well. that come when things are going wrong mm -hmm. in our lives, in our community, in our country, in our neighborhood, in our family, on our job. When we get worried and our burdens, uh, uh, burdens about the future, when we feel depressed and stressed out, when we feel like we want to end it all, just keep at, and we just keep asking why to test, 
when we're doing our best, mm -hmm. James mm -hmm. tells us that we need to ask God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. He says again, if any of you lack wisdom, mm -hmm. ask God. Yeah. And God is not stingy. Mm -hmm. He will give it to you generously. But then he won't, he won't condemn you. He won't find fault in you. He will just give it to you because he knows you need wisdom. And so, so thanks. When we have prayed for the pain to stop, mm -hmm. for the sickness to go away, mm -hmm. for relationships to be repaired, mm -hmm. for our financial burdens to be lifted, mm -hmm. and nothing changed, ask God for the wisdom mm -hmm. to deal with the pressure. Mm -hmm. Ask God for wisdom to endure and persevere. Sometimes he's not going to move the mountain. But sometimes he'll give you the strength to climb the mountain. Well, sometimes he'll give you the strength to bear it, amen. What are you doing? He'll give you the grace that is sufficient, yeah. amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So think of that. When was the last time mm. you asked God for wisdom mm. during your trials and tribulations and trouble? Is it rather the first thing on your prayer list? Mm. We want to, we tend to want a quick we live in a microwave uh, a society. We want things done right now. No, we want things done yesterday. Amen. Well, amen. We want things done right now. Right now, God. If we don't do it right now, next minute will be too late. Amen. amen. However, I, over the years, I have found that I do ask God for wisdom more and more. I think that I, I found out that by asking God for wisdom, amen, I can find the light at the end of the tunnel, amen. amen. I can see where God is leading me and he's helping me, even when I fail to ask him. Mm -hmm. That light in hindsight also showed me that no matter what I thought, I was never alone, alone amen. No matter what I thought, it worked out for my good, amen. And so next James says, but when we act, we must believe and not doubt. Right. Because he said the person that doubts mm -hmm. is double-minded, amen. Mm -hmm. He's like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. And that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, he's double-minded, right. he's unstable. Mm -hmm. And so James directs us to some hard stuff here, amen. He tells us to believe, mm -hmm. don't doubt. Mm -hmm. Believe that God is listening. Believe that God is willing and able to help us. In every aspect of our life. Yeah. Even if they don't come when we, don't, when we want them to, okay. amen? Right. And so, again, we have faith that can help us to stay grounded mm. and off the rocks when the storms of life get really bad. Yeah. Yeah. The wisdom we ask for help, amen, can help us, amen, God, to know that God is with us and active in our lives. Wisdom helps us to focus on the destination when the journey seems unbearable, amen. Mm -hmm. James tells us to ask for wisdom and not to know why or who or how, but to know that God is with us. Yes. And yes, it tells us ask for wisdom, amen. Mm -hmm. And wisdom that will strengthen us, strengthen our faith, mm -hmm. strengthen our joy, amen, when we face those things. Mm -hmm. Wisdom on the way. That we can have that pure joy. Because we must believe with all our soul that there is help in God. So that we can count our joy. And as I prepare to take my seat, I want to reiterate that we must endure trials, endure tribulations, and endure suffering. Because often in the midst of our trials, yes, we want to get our suffering. And we pray that God will deliver us right now. But I come to tell somebody that sometimes the only way out of trouble is to go through trouble. Amen? Amen. I hear you saying, Lord, I'm going to build this limo. And I need you to take me out of it. Well, saints, I come to tell you, you have got to go through it. Amen. And you can just hold on. You will be stronger. When you come out, that when you went in. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then again, I know often, when we are in our trials, we want a premature deliverance. 
Well, when you get a premature deliverance, you get an undeveloped faith, baby. Troubles are to examine our faith and to enrich our inner strength. And today, God has called me to remind you, to remind me that our, that, that our suffering occurs, that no suffering of brother occurs outside of his will. And these trials and tribulations that we are going through are his means by which he's growing us spiritually, particularly in the area of our faith and our joy. So what trials are you facing today? What trials are you seeking to avoid and outrun? How your faith been tested? How could, how could your steadfastness and God grow? If you begin to embrace all your trials with joy, knowing God is building your steadfastness to make you unmoved, always abound in the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe before you ask God to end a particular trial, you should first ask him what he's trying to teach you. Mm -hmm. God never weighs suffering, and he always has a purpose in our trial in our tribulations. In closing, I'm asking you rather than running and seeking to end your trials and your tribulations, allow them to work towards perfecting you. Let's remember that our trials are not meant to break us, but to shape us and to mold us into the image of Christ. Amen. They're not meant to push us away from God, but to pull us closer to him. Mm -hmm. They are not meant to make us bitter, but they are to make us better. Amen. So let's not resist them. Let's not, let's not resent them, but let us rejoice in them. Because when we do, we will not be just surviving, but we will be striving. We will not just endure, but we will be mature. We will not be just getting by, but we'll be going by. Amen? And that's something to be joyful about. about, about. Amen. James also cautions us to check our attitudes more than checking on our circumstances. Because if we begin to embrace our testings and our trials and our suffering, we will live more victorious and reach near to the standard of Jesus himself. Saints, trials, yes, may take away our worldly possessions, but they shouldn't take away our joy. Amen. They shouldn't take away our faith. Now let me close with a familiar story, because I know I've told this story before, amen. It says like this, once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was so miserable and that she was tired, sick and tired of just fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed to her that was one problem after another. Her father, who was a chef, took her to the kitchen and he filled three pots with water and placed each one on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he put, he put potatoes in one pot, he put eggs in the, uh, the second pot, and he put brown coffee beans in the third pot. And then he let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. And after 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes and eggs out and placed them in a bowl. He then allowed the uh, uh, coffee out into a cup. And turning to the daughter, he asked, Daughter, what do you see? She said, I see potatoes, eggs, and coffee. Well. <laughs> he said, look closer. <laughs> she did, and she noticed the potatoes were soft, and that the eggs were hard boiled. And finally, she sipped the coffee, and its rich aroma <laughs> brought a smile to her face. And she said, Father, what does this mean? 
He explained that each item, the potato, egg, and coffee, had each faced the same adversity, mm. which was the boiling water. Mm. However, each one had reacted differently in the boiling water. The potato went in strong, hard, and unrelenting, but it became soft and weak after being in the hot water. Mm. The egg went in fragile, easy to break, but after being in the hot water, it became hard. And the coffee she found was unique. When exposed to the boiling water, it had changed its environment. It had changed the water into something new. So thanks, which are you? With adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Amen. Are you a potato? Well. Are you an egg? Huh. Or are you a coffee bean? <laughs> Life on earth would not be worth much <laughs> if every source of irritation were removed. <laughs> it would not be worth much if he removed all our heads, amen. If he removed all our backbites, amen. It would not be worth much, amen. If we got all the money we want. Got everything that we desire in me without experiencing trouble. But yet, most of us rebel at the things that irritate us and count them as heavy loss mm. when those things should be rich gain. Mm. But we must remember that, like a pearl, only happens when sand gets inside an oyster, an oyster and irritates it. That we are made better, we are made stronger. When we go through the fire well, and we come well, out well. as pure gold, well, fit well, well. for the master's use, amen. 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 Some of us are not fit mm -hmm. for the master's use because we are not willing well. to undergo uh -huh. suffering, trials, and tribulation. Amen. Amen. Some of us are not fit for the master's use, amen, mm. because we jumped out of the fire too <laughs> soon, amen. Well. Some of us are not fit. For the master's use, amen. Because we are bought the process that God has sent us for us mm. to become better and to count it all joy, amen. Mm. Oh, we can count it all joy because God so loved the world that he gave us a way but we didn't have a way That's out, right. amen. amen. Oh, amen. say we can count it all joy amen. because Jesus yes. came that we might have life yes. and have it more abundantly amen. no matter what we go through. Amen. 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 Yes, we can count it our joy because our, our Calvary, Jesus took on our sins and washed away our sins. Amen. Amen. Yes, we can count our joy because on that third day, mm -hmm. Jesus assured us that each of us yeah. entered into a fixed fight well. and we can count and shout hallelujah, oh, amen. amen. Count it out joy, yeah. amen. Because yeah. when we are up, amen. Shout hallelujah, <laughs> count it out joy when we are down, amen. Because mm -hmm. we know that God is in control at all times, amen. amen. We can shout hallelujah, yeah. anyhow. Yeah. Count it out joy, yeah. amen. Because yeah. we yeah. serve a mighty, yeah. mighty yeah. good God, yeah. amen. Yeah. Yes, we can count it out joy, saints, because our God, can do anything yeah. but fail. Mm -hmm. And so when others talk about us, still count it all joy. Mm -hmm. When best friends ridicule us, count it all joy. Mm -hmm. When our electricity is turning off, mm -hmm. count it all joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we are sick and can't seem to get well, mm -hmm. count it all joy. Yeah. When our heart is broken, count it all joy. Yeah. When we are busted and disgusted, yeah. still count it all joy. Because when we count it all joy, say, we can turn our weeping into rejoicing. When we count it all joy, we can turn our midnight into days. And when we count it all joy, we can turn our trials into triumph. When we count it all joy, amen, we know, amen, God will keep us in perfect God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. does not make a mistake. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Amen. He knows what's happening to 
us. Amen. Amen. Even we know we should rejoice that God is in control Amen. and that he's a loving father. Amen. He's a good Amen. father. Amen. Amen. He desires the best for us. Oh, yeah. And sometimes that best is trials, oh, troubles, and tribulations yeah. to work patience in us, to make us be perfect and complete, to make us fit for his shoes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Let us stand for the invitation to discipleship. And let's dig forward to give us the invitation to disciple. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Count it all joy. Count it joy. Yeah. Count it joy, 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 joy down in my heart. All right yeah. now. Because joy springs from the inside oh. and not from the outside. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, yes. <laughs> because out of the mouth comes the issues of what? Your heart, right? Thank you. Amen. So Pastor preached that sermon, Pastor after the sermon, that was one of the sermons. Mm -hmm. And James just happened to be one of my favorite chapters. Amen. One of my favorite books in the Bible. Why? Because James speaks a lot of wisdom. Yes, he does. He speaks a lot of wisdom. And I pray for wisdom. Yes. I pray for wisdom just like Pastor was talking about. And I ask for wisdom on a daily basis. Yes. And I believe. Mm -hmm. And I, because I believe, I believe God gives it to me. Just like he'll give it to you. Yes. But also, I asked God one day, I asked Jesus one day, would he come into my life? <laughs> and, I, and when I did it, I was broken. And I was open. And I was believing that he would come. But see, when God responds to your faith, he responds to faith. Because in that book of James that Pastor preached about, he said that you act, act, and he will give you abundantly, right? Not that. But he did so also said, come by faith. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah. And if you want to know something about yeah. it, just go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, just read that. And you'll see many examples of where people, where God responds to the people's faith. See, because he told no of that to build an ark. Because it had come to rain, and nobody ever seen rain before. And they laughed at it. But by faith, he did it, right? And those who disbelieved, they got drowned out. So, Somebody today heard that sermon that pastor preached, and they couldn't sit still. Even if they was in the church or whether they was online, somebody was saying, hey, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But the only problem was they had to step forth and say, Lord, Jesus, enter into my life and become my Savior and become my Lord. So now is that time. Now is that time we're going to open up the door of the church. And Jesus wants you to open up the door of your heart and allow him to come in. Somebody was convicted by what they heard today. Somebody is on the edge right now. Wondering, when am I going to get my breakthrough? Somebody has been complaining and saying, when is this going to be over? Yes. I can't wait until when is God going to do something for me? When is he going to grant me some relief? But see, James has said to try to the test of your faith. And your trial, I want to help bring you some patience. Right? So when you're going through your trials. Count it all joy. Somebody right now today wants Jesus to change their life. They want to be smiling on the inside so that they can smile on the outside. You can come back to this experience in your life. Or you can come by baptism. You can come by letter. You can even come by watching. If you don't have a church home, you can come and sit with us every Sunday. And we'll love on you. See you decide. But I would caution you, don't wait too long. Because tomorrow's not promised to you. I know. 
Now this is the next minute or the next hour, I promise to you. You can come by left. You can come any way you want. But come by faith. Believe it. That Jesus will change your life. He will make a difference in your whole life. And it won't be easy. Because he does care. He cares for you. Amen. Amen. It's good that you're in this area. You got on in, greater spirit. 
of the Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Lord God, we just come again, you're your believers, Lord God. Gather in your name, Lord God. Gather in faith, believing that you are a prayer answering God. And that nothing is too hard for you, Lord God. We come, Lord God, calling on your name. Name above every name, name that's worthy to be praised, God. And so, Lord God, we thank you again for the word that went forth, Lord God. We pray, God, that, Lord God, that we will hide the word that goes out Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, in our hearts, Lord God, that we might grow thereby, Lord God, and that we might hide in our hearts, Lord God, that we might not sin against you, Lord God, because we know that your word is very important, Lord God, for us, Lord God. It's our spiritual food, Lord God. Thereby we grow, we grow Lord God. And so we thank you again for the word of God, Lord God. And we pray, God, for those who are sick, Lord God. There are many on the sick list, Lord God. We are still praying for Visha Hayes, Lord God, Dan Swan. We're still praying for Crystal Williams, Barbara Burroughs, Veronica Bowman, Daryl Dyson, Lord God. We continue praying for Patty Harvey, Lord God, Ebony Lennox, Lord God. We continue praying for Rosetta Brown, Lord God. And Lord God, we continue to pray, God, for those who are bereaved. We lift up the Cruz family, Lord God, especially Bernard Cruz and the pastor and his brother Ted, Lord God. We lift up uh, Paul Pernod and the pastor from Mom Gloria Odom, Lord God. We lift up, Lord God, with my neighbors, Lord God. Uh, John Wright and Pastor, his wife Jesse, and so many others, Lord God, the lost have lost loved ones, Lord God, not only recently, Lord God, but throughout the years, Lord God. And so we pray for their comfort, Lord God, their strength, Lord God. We pray, God, that you would continue to walk beside them and encourage their hearts, Lord God. We pray, God, for all the fond memories, Lord God, of our loved ones, Lord God. And we pray, God, that those memories, Lord God, will bring us comfort and peace and joy, Lord God. And so, God, we pray for, still praying for those, Lord God, affected by Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for restoration in those areas, Lord God, that's been affected, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for relief, Lord God, to get to those victims and families, Lord God, the Lord God, to help them in their time of need, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Don and her upcoming surgery on tomorrow, Lord God. We pray, God, that it be successful, Lord God. We pray, God, that there will be no anxiety, no fear, no doubt, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray, God, again, Lord God, that, that even as she prepares, Lord God, to go forth, Lord God, knowing that you are with her, Lord God, every step of the way, Lord God, even in the room, Lord God. So we pray over the surgeons, Lord God. We pray over everybody that's in that room, Lord God. We pray, God, over the Give them wisdom, Lord God. Give them compassion, Lord God. And we pray for deliverance, Lord God. Some people need deliverance, Lord God. Lord God, deliverance, Lord God, from the world, Lord God. Lord God, Jesus said he didn't want to take us out of the world for us to be, but he wanted to keep us in this world, Lord God. So we pray, God, that the, the, the world will come out of us, Lord God. The Lord God, that we will walk in the spirit, Lord God, not by faith, Lord God. So, Lord God, deliver us from the world of desires, Lord God, world of talk, world of walks, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let us be loving and kind, just like Jesus is loving and kind. Let us be compassionate, Lord God. Let us be patient with one another, Lord God. Because, Lord God, none of us has arrived yet, Lord God. And, Lord God, let us be faithful, Lord God. The one who called us, Jesus is faithful, Lord God. He desires us to be faithful, Lord God, in all our, un un uh, all our doings, Lord God. And Lord God, let us do things, Lord God, to the glory of you. Whatever we do, let us do it to the glory of God, without murmuring and complaining, Lord God. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for, for uh, uh, those suffering, Lord God, with back pains, yes. the heart of health, those suffering, suffering with our vitals, Lord God, the yes. pains in the legs, in the yes. knees, in the hips, back, shoulders, neck, pain throughout the body, Lord God. But no, no, but no matter what the pain is, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you are a healer, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you for some grace, Lord God. Because Lord God, sometimes the, the pain gets so hard to bear, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we pray that you would be that pain bearer, Lord God. That you would take the pain away, Lord God. That you would give your people relief, Lord God. So they can rest, Lord God. So they can sleep, Lord God. That even Lord God can be about that daily way, Lord God. We pray for people who are traveling, Lord God. We pray for safety, Lord God. We pray that you keep them, Lord God, from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord God. We pray for those who are suffering with cancer, Lord God. You still heal them, Lord God. Amen. Some are suffering with migraines and high blood pressure, Lord God. Some are suffering with breathing problems, Lord God. Some are suffering with this and that, Lord God. 
But we pray, God, that you would heal them, Lord God, Lord God. Touch the ears, Lord God. Touch the eyes, Lord God. Some can't have problems hearing. Some have problems seeing, Lord God. So touch every part of our bodies right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, again for being the healer and the deliverer, Lord God. Some, Lord God, are struggling financially, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we just pray, God, that you be that way maker for them, Lord God. We pray, God, that you will send help from on high, Lord God. Send help from the east, west, north, and south, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we ask you to bless them, Lord God, that they're able to, Lord God, to take care of their daily needs, Lord God. You said you would supply our daily bread, Lord God. And so we are trusting, Lord God, that you would supply, Lord God, the bread that they need, Lord God, the food they need, Lord God, the shelter they need, Lord God, the electricity they need, Lord God, whatever they stand in need, Lord God. We pray that you would provide for your children, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we just thank you again for all that you are doing in our lives, Lord God. Because we never would have made it if it had not been for you on our side, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, for holding us, us up, Lord God. Keep us from falling, even when we fall, God. We thank you for picking us up back again, Lord God. Putting our feet back on that solid rock and put, continue putting running in our feet and clapping in our hands, Lord God. And we thank you again for your joy, Lord God. And we pray, God, that we count, count it all joy, Lord God, no matter what's happening in our lives, Lord God. Because, Lord God, joy comes out of a relationship with you, Lord God. And knowing that you are our Father, Lord God. And you desire, Lord God, to bless us coming in and going out, Lord God. Continue to pray for the young, pray for the old, Lord God. Pray for the weary, pray for the tired, pray for those up and pray for those down. We pray for all mankind, Lord God. We pray for the military, Lord God. We pray for the policemen, Lord God. We pray for everyone that's serving, Lord God. Even pray for the officers in this church, Lord God. That whatever we do, God, that we do it to your glory and to your honor, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord God, help us not to be weary and well-doing, knowing that we will reap if we faint not, Lord God. And so, Lord God, let us persevere, Lord God, because you, you called us faithful. And you want us to remain faithful, Lord God, because you are still, Lord God, in the blessing business, still, Lord God, looking out for us, Lord God. Even when we're sleeping, Lord God, mm -hmm. you are not sleeping, Lord God. You are on your job 24-7, Lord God, watching over us, Lord God. And so we thank you, Lord God, for watching us, Lord God. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.